Hello everyone! Uh, what you're looking at here is a simple system that I've set up to demonstrate my Pi PS2 library. So this is a library for the Raspberry Pi that makes it really easy to interface with a PlayStation 2 remote control. So here I have my Raspberry Pi which is connected to the wireless module of the PS2 remote via 6 wires. So these are 3.3 volts and ground to power it which is just directly connected to the 3.3 volt and ground pin of the Raspberry Pi. And then there is four logic lines which is clock, attention, command and data. And then I've also got my Raspberry Pi connected to my SSC32 servo controller. Uh, and so the angle of this servo will vary linearly with the um, position of the right analog stick of the controller. So the library lets you set arbitrary pins for each of the clock, attention, command and data lines during initialization. So looking at some sample code here, uh, we just create a Pi PS2 object and then we initialize it with the appropriate pin numbers. So looking a bit closer at this uh, initialize function, see the first number was the command pin, then data pin, clock pin, and attention pin. So this library does work with either Broadcom pin numbering, GPIO pin numbering, or the Pi physical pin numbering. Uh, it just depends on which wiring Pi setup function you use. Uh, you see, I, I prefer the physical pins. They're a bit easier to tell which pin's which. Uh, and so I've connected um, the pins 19, 21, 23, and 24, respectively. Now this initialization function currently is hard-coded to set up the controller for analog mode without all pressures returned. So if you'd like to switch to digital mode or to return all pressures mode, then you need to call the reinitialization controller um, with the mode that you desire. So after it's initialized, it's all ready to go. We can use the read PS2 function to read the current state of the controller. And when we do, the public array uh, PS2 data will be populated with the current controller state. Uh, so if we look at the header file here, we can see we've got this public public variable, uh, where is it, PS2 data. Uh, and also in the header file, there is a list of what you can expect in each of the elements of PS2, depending on what mode we're in. Uh, so in digital mode, we only return 5 bytes. Uh, in analog mode, we, we return uh, 9 bytes, or we populate 9 bytes of that array. Um, and then in analog mode, with all pressures returned, we populate all 21 bytes of them. Uh, and you can see here that say uh, bit 0 of byte 4 determines if select is pressed down, bit 1 of byte 4 um, determines if, joy if the left joystick is pressed down, um, say byte 10 will return a value of 0 to 255 um, with the pressure on the R button uh, and so on for all of these. Uh, so this is a bit of a crude implementation having this uh, public variable I don't really like accessing this public variable, but that's just how it is for now. Expect it to change um, to a more e elegant method in the near future. Okay, so back to the main, you can see we enter a loop, and every 10 milliseconds, uh, this red delay millisecond is set to 10. Oops, like that. We read the controller and print out what buttons are pressed. So if I hold down the X button, then it will just print um, that X is pressed down once every 10 milliseconds. Uh, there's also functionality to determine what buttons have changed state since the last read in order to detect a single button clicker release. Um, so I've just implemented that functionality on the start button here, but it's the same for uh, any other button, so you can just copy this um, to implement that. Uh, and I've also set it up so that when R2 is held down, we print out the current analog values of the right joystick, both in, in the vertical and horizontal direction. So all of this sample code is found in the sample.cpp file in the GitHub repo, um, excluding this uh, servo control functionality. Okay, so let's see it in action. So we'll just uh, make it. And right. Make sure we're turned on. So you can see if I hold down X, then it'll just keep printing that X is pressed. If I hold down square, it'll keep printing that square is pressed. Uh, if I just press start, because that's what I implemented the uh, up-down functionality on, then it'll detect that it's been pushed down, but it won't keep on um, printing it. And then when I release it, it detects that it's been released. So push down, release, push down, release. Uh, and if I turn on the servo controller, then you can see when I move this over there, Thank you. 
So the servo just varies linearly with the position of the right joystick. And if I hold down R2, then you can see what the actual value is. Right, so it's uh, very simple to now interface with a PlayStation 2 remote. Um, I hope some people find this useful. Thanks. Bye.